The following presentation is made possible through the generosity of Lifehouse Fellowship partners and friends. With someone in movement. I can work with someone that's moving toward their destiny. I, I, can, I can work with someone who heard me but didn't really hear me. Right? And what today's message is, is here to help you to move. Today's message, message is actually titled, Faith in Action. If you want to do something for the Lord, you got to act. You got to do. You got to obey. You got to respond. There are so many people that have gotten away from, well, I heard the Lord say this, but I don't know. Let me go, let me go, you know, pray about it. Let me see if I can get the prophets to prophesy over it. You know, what happened to hearing God's voice and obeying his voice? You know, he says, uh, you know his voice. You know the voice of a good shepherd and another voice you do not follow. I think it's so interesting how we're hearing all these voices these days. We need to turn off all those voices and tune into the voice. Amen. And the only way we're going to do that is by turning off those other gadgets, turning off those things, getting quiet in his presence, say, God, I want to hear you. And guess what he does? He begins to speak. Abraham's faith in God was tested with this promise to see if he would take God at his word. No matter what his reasoning told him, Abraham did not waver in his faith and he kept and God kept his promise. In Romans chapter 4 verse 20, this is what it says. And he's refer, it's referring to Abraham he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but Abraham was strengthened in faith, giving glory to the Lord. I tell you what, I hear stories upon stories upon stories about my grandparents and about my great-grandparents, about aunt, great aunts and uncles that, that you know, when the war was going on back in Vietnam in World War II, one of my great-great aunts went down to the barn because they hadn't heard from one of, the, one of the cousins. And when this great-great aunt got disturbed, she would go down to the barn. And she would pray until she got her answer. When have we prayed till we got our answer? And that aunt, the, the old story goes, two days later, she comes up out of that barn and she's singing and praising because she didn't leave the place until she got her release that one of the brothers was going to be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're too weak. We flop like a flapjack. Pressure's applied. Blah, 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 blah. We quit. We throw in the towel too easily. The church of the living God has buckled. There's been infighting in the church. When are we going to get back to hearing God's voice and obeying his voice? You don't need to be looking at me. I'm your pastor, yes, and I love being your pastor. But let me tell you, somewhere along the way, I promise you, I will not measure up to your standards. And we put these people on pedestals, and they were never supposed to be there. When are we going to put God back on his pedestal? When are we going to put the Holy Ghost back there with Jesus and say, Lord, I ain't getting any other answers, but I'm going to get one from you. Lord. 
He didn't waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. That was the first test. The second test. Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac. I want you to go offer him up as a sacrifice. I promise you, someone asked me to do that with Winston or Easton or Duncan, any of my grandchildren or my sons, I'd have to say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Every one of you would feel that way as well. There's something about when God asks you to do something and you have a relationship with him that supersedes any other relationship that causes you to do some things that causes all of heaven to get behind you. Abraham obeys. Isaac's not some baby. Isaac's a teenager. He's, he's more than willing to get up off that, that sacrificial bed, that sacrifice that God asked him to bring, to offer your first son to me. And as, and as Abraham's drawing the knife, the angel of the Lord stops his hand and says, there's a ram in the thicket. Because you've obeyed, I'm releasing some things. Could it be we haven't seen the full release of God's measure and fullness in our lives because we haven't fully obeyed. Ladies and gentlemen, my prayer is that we cross over my prayer is that we have such a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that when he asks us to do something, it's, it's not when, it's not if, it's, it's like we're going to do now and we're going to obey completely to the fullest and we're going to say, God, if, if this is what you want, if this is what you get, and if this is what you get, then I'm going to leave the results up to you. I don't believe God's going to ask you to sacrifice your children. Unless they're being bad. No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't do that. That in that in that realm, do you know what do you know what happened there? Abraham set the precedent and how God had to respond from then on out. Because Abraham obeyed, now God had to see his son. He set the precedent. Could it be that your obedience is what's setting the precedent for the next move of God? Could it be that what God's asking you to do it's the trigger and the shift that causes all of heaven to get behind the new move. I want to be obedient. Faith, this is what we know about Abraham. He's, he's known as the father of faith. I'm, I'm moving quickly, okay? Abraham, to him, it didn't matter what the situation looked like, humanly speaking. We can imagine how he would have been tempted to thoughts of doubt as he took the trek up to Mount Moriah. Thoughts like, Sarah's heart will probably break and she'll never forgive me. I'll be a murderer. I must, I must have misunderstood God. A loving God could not possibly have, have given me this commandment. And yet Abraham had not heard wrong. 
He acted with boldness and valor because God had said it. And we can read what happened. These thoughts of doubt that Satan whispers in our ears were deflected in Abraham's. The thoughts of defeat were deflected by the shield of faith. And Abraham, beyond a shadow of a doubt, knew that God would keep his promise even if it meant he had to raise Isaac back from the dead. And it brings me to my first point today. You ready? Faith gives you and I the power to act. We're talking about faith in action. Faith in action. And I'm, I know I'm talking about radical obedience here. I'm talking about living this life where we hear God and we do what he says. Some people God hasn't spoke to you because you haven't done the last thing he told you to do. God's not going to begin. He's not redundant. He's going to tell you one thing. You obey that, you get the next command. Some of y'all are looking at me like, oh my God. Faith gives you and I the power to act. Of course, God did keep his promise. And, and at the last second, he stopped Abraham from carrying out that sacrifice. And Isaac was spared, going on to become the father of the nation of Israel. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I ask you, what is your Isaac? What has God asked you to place upon the altar of sacrifice? You can't cross over until you offer up your Isaac. I know it's, I know it's strong. I know it's summer, like, Pastor, can we, why are you hitting us upside the head? Because I believe it's such a time as this that the church has to awaken, come to its place, rightful place. And the only way we're going to do it is by offering up our Isaacs and walking in obedience to cross over. What's your Isaac? What's the thing you hold dear? Uh, man, I'm so thankful for that example. I'm so thankful for Abraham's example paving the way for us as believers. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Isn't that good? How many of you know that your senses will lie to you? And, and that's why you have to rely on faith. That's why you have to keep on keeping on. That's why you have to trust God at his word. Amen? For by faith, Trust and holy fervor, born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony, born to them and attained good report. By faith we understand that the worlds during their successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. You see, when we have the shield of faith, we can too resist the thoughts of doubt that Satan tries to sow. The God of Abraham is the same God whom you and I serve today. He is from eternity until eternity. And there is nothing that he can't accomplish around us and in us. No matter how impossible the circumstances seem, say this with me. God is able to do a miracle in my life. Say it again. God is able to do a miracle in my life. He has promised it, and we, oh, 
church. He has promised it. And if he's promised it, you can take it to the bank that if he is for you, no one can be against you. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, when you and I live in faith, then you and I will be sons and daughters inheriting all that the things that Father Abraham had made way for us and, and through Jesus and what he's done on the cross for us, we get to partake of those things. And let me tell you, whoo, I'm glad I showed up this morning. When I live in this faith, when you live in this faith, No one can stop you from crossing over. Nothing can stop you from crossing over. Revelation 21, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and they shall be my people. No limits. Where have you limited God? Today I want to say, no limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. No limits, church. Take the limits off God. Romans 16, 20 says, And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. What is faith then? Is it to sit, sit back and say, Yes, I believe God will crush Satan under my feet, and then I'll wait to see it happen? No, it is to go to action. It is to move forward. It is to go take the limits off of him. And to say, Father, I'm moving forward in faith. And when you work in me, and when you speak to me, I'll obey. And like Abraham did when he split the wood and required the sacrifice of the son, I'll obey completely. I won't just partially obey. I won't just get three quarters of the way. No, I'll do it until you say, stop. That will mean sacrifices on my part, giving up my own will in order to do God's will. Abraham saw the sacrifice as a condition from God to fulfill in order to receive his promise. It is just the same for you and I. Another point, believe in the promises of God and be quick to fulfill the conditions so God can bless you. Don't let your confidence depend on what your reasoning tells you. Man, I could go so long there. Another point. No matter what your limitations are, naturally speaking, if you will live a life of obedience, you will see more, do more, and experience more, all because you said, God, I'll do it your way. There are so many people with so much more ability. Have so much better to offer, but God will overlook the proud. All day long, David. He was the least of the tribe. He was back on, I mean, the father didn't even invite him to the anointing service.
God doesn't ask you if you're able to cross over. He only asks you if you're willing. If the answer to that is yes, I'm willing to cross over and I'm able to cross over, then there's no limit to what you and I can accomplish through living a life of faith in action. I, I sense in my spirit God's speaking right now to some. There's been some stuff going on in your spirit about maybe a decision you made and you're not real sure if you made the right one. If you'll ask the Father in your secret time this week, he's going to confirm some things. And it could be ugly when you get into your secret place and you begin to pour out your heart to the Father about some things you thought you had heard, maybe didn't come to pass. But I want you to know you can trust the Father. You can trust His heart for you. And just like Abraham, you know, he missed it that first time. Maybe you missed it. And the Lord's just like, make an adjustment. And he could handle the rest. Because he's a big God. There's been some people here, and I, I'm just being led by the Spirit. Is that all right? There's been some people here that you've stopped obeying because the last time God asked you to do something, you didn't fully obey, and it brought you to a place where you said, I I would rather him not to even talk to me anymore. I'll just do me, you do you. And the Lord wants to bring healing to your relationship with him. Abba, Father, Daddy. He wants you to be able to trust again. And I believe the Lord today, right now, is just wanting you to know that he loves you. And he said, come on. Come on, get back up. Let's cross over. Oh, that's in the past. Father, help us. Whoever that may be I'm speaking to that's just lost trust in their walk with you, Father, I I just pray peace right now over them. Lord, I just pray that the, a, a, a reawakening of their spirit, a realigning of hope is arising in them. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I, I'm, you're a big God. You can handle the tough questions. <laughs> and I just pray that as we begin to speak to you and as we begin to talk to you, you hear us and you're not going to beat us up but you will teach us Lord we have teachable hearts we're willing to hear we're willing to receive correction where we need correction Lord I love you forgive me I 
love you, Jesus. Father, I love you so much. I thank you. You're restoring hope. <laughs> I believe that with all my heart, Lord. In us, that we can have a father-son, father-daughter relationship like it should be. We love you, Father. We all said, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hey, guys, this is Pastor Jeremy Sutton here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. Thank you for tuning into our broadcast today. What a privilege it is to come into your home to minister the uncompromising word of God. I believe as the word went forth, it challenged you. Also in the challenge, it also may have confirmed some things in your life. And, and it's in our honor and our privilege to, to just bring the word for such a time as this. We know that the word is what's gonna help us in these season, in these times. And so you may have been listening to me today and saying, I need to get back into the game. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. And I want to just pray a simple prayer. Would you pray with me to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Would you say it with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Fill me. I repent of my sins. Be the Lord of my life from this day forward. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you do a couple of things for me? I would certainly appreciate it. Number one, would you go to our website at lifehousefellowship.net and hit the connect link and fill out that digital connect card? We would appreciate it. Number two, you can give us a call at 432-262-LIFE. We want to get a staff member talking to you to help you on your next steps with Jesus. Our broadcasts are made possible by the love gifts of our friends and partners. And we're asking you, would you come and be a partner with us? Down below are the options for you to sow into this ministry. Your gift gives us the ability to go into homes just like yours and minister love, hope, and healing to bring life and life everlasting to those that are needing a touch from the Father. Thank you so much for your gift today. We certainly do appreciate it. Until we connect again, remember, great days are here and greater days are ahead.